Foster. <laughs> that would have been a say what, would it? Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh how how innocent we were back then making all these predictions well when i was putting together this rundown i opened up the rundown from last year's and the predictions revisited on that one were great because <laughs> no one expected the whole world to fucking stop <laughs> <laughs> basically um, oh, dear. yeah Right, Brill, that, that was a bit of fun revisiting some of those predictions. We're going to have another quick musical interlude and then we're going to bring you the SLP Dream Team that we nearly forgot to bring you. Uh, and uh, then we'll say goodbye. <laughs> Okay, let's finish then with your 2021 SLP Dream Team. Um, easiest one was fullback. 77% of people voted for Sam Tompkins. Um, I mean, we could have a conversation why 5% of people voted for Zach Hardacre, but obviously he's got a lot of friends and family. Um, but yeah, Sam Tompkins' obvious choice there. So let's move on to a more closely contested race. Wingers. Okay. Of the six wingers available five of them received 30 percent or more of the votes which is pretty evenly spread but in the end dream team uh, official dream team member tom davies got 53 percent of the vote but he wasn't joined by ken Sear in this team he was in fact joined by ryan hall who got 44 percent of the votes are, are we comfortable with those choices sarah i didn't go for either of them I went for CO and maybe Yaha. Fair enough. I um, like a big winger. Well, you you should become a cast fan then because they've started signing all your old ones. I know. <laughs> yeah, I, sh- I should like small wingers now, shouldn't I? <laughs> uh, for, for me, Tom Davis was an absolute um, certainty. Um, I went for Ken Seal because I think I, I don't know. I always I think recognising the top try scorer is something the dream team should do. So that's why I went for Seal. I did the same, but I totally understand the Ryan Hall choice. Yeah, me too. Um, in the centres, this was really close between three people, uh, but three doesn't go into two. So, and we're talking a couple of percent between them all. Jake Mamo missed out. I think unfairly. 42% of the vote. Sean Kenny Dow got in with 44% of the vote and Jack Wellsby got in with 47% of the vote. So um, there you go. Mark Percival was the bottom of this, by the way, 14% of the vote. So everyone thought he was the wrong choice. Lange and Jordan Turner both got quite a bit more than Mark Percival. But Wellsby and Kenny Dow make the Super League dream team in the centres. I mean, I can't really remember very well, but I seem to remember voting for Kenny Dow, I think. So I'm I'm part of that problem. I think I went Kenny Dowell and Mamo. I went for um I definitely went Lange, but I I don't know who else I went for. But you know if you've got Lange in the sense you only really need one, don't you? (laughs) That's another reason why you don't like Ignatius Passy because he sparked him out in that game at at Magic. Yeah, yes, and that was straight in front of me. Yeah, (laughs) see, I said he was. There you go. It's it's, it's all coming back now. Okay, on to halfback. Now, a bit of a pet peeve of mine for the official dream team was that James Maloney got in and Josh Drinkwater didn't, right? Because Josh Drinkwater had way more tries and assists and attacking kicks and like positive plays that you can actually quantify than James Maloney had, who had the highest amount of errors and the highest amount of penalties in the league this year. Um, <laughs> but... Anyway, just needed to get that off my chest. I, I did already in the SLP short, but I did it, I did it again now. One of them was quite favourited. One of the people who got in the team, 67% of people picked Jordan Abdul as one of their halfbacks. So Jordan Abdul's in the, in the SLP dream team as a halfback. Amazing. Who'd have thought that three years ago? The other one will be contentious. It's Johnny Lomax with 42% of the votes. Don't agree with that, but anyway, I kinda, that's democracy for you. I kind of do in the competition that was around for it. I, I, 
think he was good in a really good side. Gareth Widdop probably had a great month in the middle of the season, but didn't keep it up enough. I don't know. What do you reckon, Sarah? Are you comfortable with Abdul and Lomax? Um, I went Abdul. I've got no idea who else I went for, but I very much doubt it had been Lomax. <laughs> I very much doubt it too. Uh, <laughs> next up, props. And 12% of people are fucking idiots. <laughs> because Alex Warmley oh. only got 88% of people's yeah, uh, vote to be one of the two props. At least 12% of people are idiots. At yeah. least. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, but the other one uh, is Hull FC's Chris Satai with 40 Hey, you've just those. called me an idiot. Well, because you went Liggy Sow and Chris Satai. I most certainly did. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Look, we, we've, been, we've been giving David shit all night, even though he's not here to defend himself, for being too much know, of a with his Liggy team. Sow and Chris Satai were the best prop pairing for a lot of the year. Oh, they, they... were the best prop pairing, I agree. If we'd have been putting this up as pick, pick one side's best prop pairing, I'd have said yeah, definitely, no, but, but Alex no, Wormsley but, but, but was better like than any prop, prop pairing. You wouldn't want Alex Wormsley alongside either of them, it just wouldn't work. I he think can if sit you on put, the fence. I think you could put Alex Wormsley and no other prop on and he'd still be better than every other prop pairing in the league though. No, no, no. I went Sow actually rather than Satai. I, I thought Sow was a bit unheralded in that duo this year. I think Satai had that great game against us in the Cup um, but I think I think that gave him people made him think he was way better than Sal when I think they were very evenly matched. I yeah. think they were very very even, but Sal was more likely to throw a pass that wouldn't come off. See, I, I definitely went for one of the Hull FC props along with Wormsley, but I, I withdraw the vote. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's Alex Wormsley and Chris Satai. I think that's a fair pairing to to be seen in in that SLP Dream Team. Um, Hooker. 56% of people went for James Roby. He is your SLP Dream Team hooker. I don't think we can argue too much about us going away from Cruz Leeming, who was the official Dream Team hooker, for his performances at halfback. <laughs> Second row, this was Ty, and this was one that I was watching as the votes came in because it started with, with the ginger god running away with it. How could he not be? He was in the official dream team. I know he played but, a bit of the year at centre, and he was a god there as well. But Underrated, though, apparently. <laughs> uh, but, well, he is underrated. These people who voted for him as underrated had foresight, because as a group, the SLP listership have underrated him. They've not picked him in the side. He got 44% <laughs> of the vote, but was nipped... Uh, Nipped at, nipped at the end by Mike McMeekin with a, f a late flurry of votes for the Catalan second row. We got 47% of the votes. And Kane Linnett, um, whose nickname I'm not going to say because it's stupid, but 51% for the Scottish forward Kane Linnett. I think that that's fair. He was in the official dream team and is in the SLP dream team. What uh, what do you make of that one, uh, Al? Um, I'm trying to recall who I voted for now. I think I did go for Lynette, I think. But I, I probably did go for um, for your, you know, your favourite as well. So, yeah. I I think it's harsh that, he, that Farrell misses out, I have to say. Um, yeah. Sarah, who did you pick alongside Manu Mal? Good. <laughs> yeah. Pardon? Who did you pick alongside Manu Mal? <laughs> well, it wasn't Liam Farrell. <laughs> It's not his uh, fault that Jake Connor can't tackle. Not for that reason. <laughs> I, 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 I'd forgotten that was him. Um, I don't know, and I only filled it in, like, yesterday. <laughs> um, who might I have picked? Sione Matautia, probably, I think you might have picked. Or Mike McMeekin. Mm -hmm. mm. Do you know what? I'll find one of the five people who picked Manu Mao and then t tell you which one you <laughs> think <laughs> was <laughs> I don't even know if I picked Mao. Uh, I think you picked Sione Matautia with Did Manu I? Mao. Because if not, you picked either Kane Lynette or Liam Farrell because everyone else in recent you see, before that's that the thing. I don't like Lynette and I don't like Farrell. Yeah, so you've got Matautia but I must have picked Manu Mao yeah. because, yeah, maybe I did go for Matautia then. 
Fair enough. Yeah. Well, those guys fell a bit short of the uh, of the final pair in Linnet and McMeekin. And finally, loose forward. And this this for a while was an exciting two horse race between before the Saints fans turned up. Um, <laughs> and Morgan Knowles got it with 51%. I think this is his second, maybe third, um, but certainly second in a row. SLP Dream Team appearance. Uh, ben Garcia was close-ish with 35% of the vote. I, I went for Ben Garcia. I think Knowles missed the first half of the season. Um, and at that time, Benjamin Garcia was... As was Joe Westerman at that point in time as well, which is why he got on the shortlist. But Ben Garcia was outstanding whilst Knowles wasn't playing. And then when fit, was still good when Knowles was playing. So I kind of felt Garcia, but the the people went Knowles. Yeah, I can't. I think it was. I think I might have gone for Garcia because I think I was influenced by you. You made a very good case that you know <laughs> a bit of a bit of recency bias kind of let, bled, bled into the selection. But but yeah, I mean they, they were probably the two outstanding loose forwards, you'd say. So. You can't argue with Knowles, can you, Sarah? Well, I seem to remember. I think I was on the show with you um, when we discussed the dream team. Um, yeah, I, again, Knowles, he just doesn't really do a lot for me, to be perfectly honest. Um, and I do think that um, Garcia deserved it for the season rather than just the last few matches. Yeah, but uh, so that may, that wraps up the uh, SLP dream team as being Sam Tompkins at fullback, Tom Davies and Ryan Hall on your wings, Sean Kenny Dowell and Jack Wellsby in your centres, Jordan Abdul and Johnny Lomax as your halfback pairing, Chris Satai and Alex Wormsley uh, in the front row with James Roby between them at hooker. Kane Linnett and Mike McMeekin in the second row with loose forward Morgan Knowles. That's a very KR heavy team, isn't it? When you look at it, number of players picked. Yeah, three. Three. Four. Four. Right, all four. Yeah. Can, can we check how many times Tom's Tom voted? Just, just. So <laughs> we got. So Catalans had one, two. That's it, isn't it? Catalan, no, Mike Meekin three. St. Helens, who won the double, had Wellsby, Lomax, Wormsley, Roby, and Knowles. So they had five, didn't they? One, yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So, I've, yeah. I suppose it, it's it's it makes sense that it's dominated by those three sides, doesn't it? Because, you know, the two of them won trophies and the other one was the biggest storyline yes I, th- I think that's fair and it, it kind of it's reflected in the you know kind of coach of the year isn't it as well yeah so, yeah i think that's oh uh, yeah i think it's fair enough but yeah it is weird seeing four whole kr players in, in your dream team <laughs> that's, and, that's a weird thing to say <laughs> yeah and no wigan players uh, i mean that's not that's not so weird this year i but... can't imagine that's not that's happened before though no wigan no warrington no leads Nah. That'll have happened twice at least, won't it? <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe in them wilderness middle eight years, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Stop... I bet someone still got in. Do you know, the one thing I was um, thinking about in the last couple of weeks as a sort of re- final thought on 2021 for me is next year, we're going to have to think about putting a wheelchair player of the year in. I think um, the, the, the wheelchair inter- internationals have been like really good they, they filled yeah. the gap where I had holidays booked off for World Cup games <laughs> um, and there was no rugby league but then all of a sudden there was two world class rugby league internationals being played between England yeah. and France I don't know how Could... much you guys caught of those games I saw, I saw a little bit of it I, I, I don't know if, you, if anyone can fill in a gap in my knowledge I, I, why is why is Kent a hotbed of rugby league wheel, wheelchair rugby league I, I, I genuinely, I don't, I don't understand why. Can, can, can someone tell me why? I don't know why. <laughs> Sean, Sean Orton will probably know why. He's been a big proponent of the wheelchair game, you know, for for a long time before it became, you know, cool and hip, like for us to start yeah. talking about it. Yeah, it's but, just like you know, like yeah, like obviously like. No- 